Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Auto. So this is my MG ZS EV. It's a 2020 model. It is now a year old and it's done uh, about 4,500 miles. So in this video, we're just going to have a quick look at what's under the bonnet on an electric vehicle and we'll have a quick look underneath as well. So on these cars, the bonnet is absolutely huge. Um, obviously because they make these as petrol as well so there's enough space here to fit in a petrol engine but looking at the electric versions um, everything is mounted very low and there just seems to be an awful lot of space in here um, and also all the electric drivetrain components are separated and spread out whereas on most other electric vehicles all of these things will be bolted together in a stack to form a motor stack so you'd have the electric motor down low and then your charger and inverter equipment all bolted to make one huge lump so it very much does look like still an engine conventional engine whereas this is separated and i quite like this idea because in the future if any of this needs to be worked on uh, it's all accessible and you could change any of these components individually without having to take the whole stack out so it could be a lot easier for um, repair and um, a lot less labor if you ever have to change anything the other thing to note with this is the under tray doesn't go the full length and it is quite open at the bottom and because of that as you can see it is all quite dirty in here and a lot of water when you're driving in the winter does spray up and uh, obviously it's been very wet recently we have had floods but i've opened this bonnet before and little cavities like this i found have uh, got water in which is fine doesn't do it any harm but it does mean this engine bay is dirtier than what it really should be um, and i can't see why they just didn't enclose the bottom fully with uh, another plastic tray and it would just keep all this cleaner maybe it's for cooling uh, maybe keeping it open does aid cooling but um, anyway it's not a big deal so this is our electric motor down here which we can see better from uh, the underside which we'll have a look at in a minute everything that is orange is the high voltage cables so the battery pack at the back traditionally uh, EV batteries are about 400 volt um, so all the high voltage cables are orange so you know which is the dangerous bit and then these other units will be the uh, charger and inverter equipment I don't actually know which is which uh, I am no expert when it comes to um, EV components you know basically just retail cars not um, work on them um, but anyway, this video isn't uh, about getting too technical. It's just showing you the basics if you've never looked under a bonnet before. Uh, we've got a coolant bottle here and all the coolant hoses. And you can see they go into all of the um, electronic component assemblies as well because all this stuff is also water-cooled as well. And here we've got a windscreen washer bottle, of course. Um, coolant hoses and uh, down here somewhere will be an electric air conditioning compressor uh, which i can't see from here but yeah quite a lot of hoses at the front here um, and then here's our 12 volt battery of course and all evs do still have a 12 volt battery and just like all petrol and diesel cars you're completely reliant on that 12 volt battery to start an ev so this isn't cranking an engine like it would be conventionally it is just turning on relays uh, operating your central locking um, powering up all the ecus in the car because everything still remains um, as 12 volt circuits all standard car stuff um, so obviously you need the 12 volt battery to unlock get in the car turn the ignition on all the dashes lit up and then when you turn the ignition on or in this case you're not turning key you're pushing a button um, at that point when you started the car the relays are um, clicked over the contactors should i say and at that point the traction battery underneath is then delivering 400 volts to everything up front but until then you're just working off the 12 volt battery which keeps it all safe and keeps it all low voltage and it also makes it all cheaper because then all the things like your lights wipers motors in the mirrors central locking all the ecus is all standard 12 volt stuff of course a lot of those components are the same on the uh, petrol vehicles of course 
Obviously, with electric vehicles, you don't have an alternator charging the battery while you drive. So what you have is a DC to DC converter, which will be in one of those two units. And it's taking the 400 volt from the uh, traction battery, 400 volt DC, converting it down to 14 volt DC. And the vehicle then charges that battery while you're driving, just like an alternator would do with an ICE vehicle. And as you can see, the battery is a Vata battery. It's a 60 amp hour, 608 amps. Um, so, yes, yeah, an AGM battery as well. Um, but yeah, it's standard battery, probably from their normal parts bin. I suspect it's the same battery they fit in the uh, petrol vehicles. Um, obviously, with an electric vehicle, this isn't really doing much other than powering um, electronics and obviously your lights and wipers and things, but all very low power drain stuff. So, uh, yeah, complete overkill for what's needed in an EV, but it keeps it cheap by just using standard parts. Um, I do notice the previous, the earlier models in this, they were having um, fitted with batteries that are branded as um, Sayak Motor Company. But uh, this is obviously Vata and I've seen a lot of the new ones now have all just got Vata batteries. The, the original Sayak batteries, um, or so, sorry, Saik batteries were probably um, Vata anyway. They just haven't been rebranding them for them. Um, but yeah, decent, decent brand battery, which is nice to see. Yeah, and um, Sayak Motor Company, SAIC, um, that's who own uh, MG now. Um, they're a Chinese company and have got an awful lot of experience of making um, EVs, uh, more than um, all um, European uh, manufacturers. Um, obviously, we've got Renault and Nissan who've been making EVs for uh, 10 years now, but to be honest, they've only, well, Nissan have only been making one model, the Leaf. Um, Renault have made a few models, um, the Fluence, the Zoe and the Kangoo Ram and the Twizy, of course. Um, but yeah, Sayak Motor Company, or Saik Motor Company, um, make an awful lot of models uh, in uh, China and they also make vehicles for Volkswagen and um, I think someone else as well, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, while it's a brand that we might not know over here, uh, they make an awful lot of cars and the brands we get over here of theirs is uh, MG and um, Maxus, the old LDV van company. And we've also got another coolant bottle here. Um, and then we've got our fuse box here. Uh, brake fluid reservoir there. And we can see the brake master cylinder at the back there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we've got the radiator at the front, a big fan on the back. Just having a look there, that rattles a little bit. But um, yeah, and we get cobwebs here, which you get on all EVs. For some reason, spiders absolutely love living under the bonnet of electric vehicles. Um, so do squirrels and mice and all sorts of other things and birds nest as well. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think that's about all I can show you there. So let's uh, get it up and have a look underneath. So got it up in the air. So let's have a look underneath. Uh, we obviously got the plastic panels um, under the front here, but it is quite open. And actually what I find is a lot of water does get up into the uh, engine bay under the bonnet in the winter. But anyway, this is our electric motor. You can see here the motor and then at the back here, or probably on this side, is your transmission. And then these are your drive shafts going to the front wheels and the other one there. Here's the motor. It's 105 kilowatt, 353 Newton meters of torque. Maximum speed, uh, 10,000 RPM. Maximum 30 minutes power, 68 kilowatt. 394 VDC rated voltage. IP64 made by Hugh Hewer Automotive Electric Drive Company Limited. Um, up here we've got a couple of Bosch pumps by the looks of it. That's on our either cooling or air conditioning system, probably water cooling. We've got pipes there. Um, and then up here we've got all our high voltage cables air conditioning lines and then the um, steering rack 
There's, that's the shaft up there going up to the steering wheel. Um, high voltage cables there going to the battery pack. So looking further along, we've got our battery pack here. So the battery pack, this is the driver's door. So the pack starts here, is mounted on these rails that are um, underneath the sills. Starts here, goes along to the uh, end of the um, rear doors just in front of your rear suspension and um, it's got a steel, is that steel or aluminium um, plates to the bottom of it. Uh, they are coated in something um, but anyway one, two, three, three plates with lots of screws holding them on um, and the pack itself is held on with one, two, three, four, five bolts, so ten bolts in total. And then looking round at the back here, we can see the battery pack there. And then this is obviously the back of the car. We've got the wheel well there to hold the spare wheel. We've got another plastic tray here. I don't know whether anything is inside that. No, I guess not. That's probably just the storage compartment in the boot where you can chuck your charge cables. And then obviously we've got our rear suspension here and um, the beam across the back there. Um, and then the back wheels here, springs, shocks, the motors for the electronic handbrake. And um, yeah, there we go. So looking at the front of the car, this is obviously our radar here for the adaptive cruise control and uh, I thought I'd just show you what's behind the grill. So obviously with an EV um, the grill is pretty much blocked off and we've got our charging ports behind there um, but there is still a radiator behind there so the corners are open as there's a little slot down the bottom um, but yeah there's still a full-size radiator behind there even though all the middle is blocked off from the charge ports and here there's quite a lot of cables and plastic blocking um, blocking it off that are those cables coming from the charge port uh, but most of the cooling is done via this vent at the bottom and we can see down there we do have a radiator behind there as well but obviously there's a lot less uh, cooling needed on an EV. You have these lower vents which uh, still is forcing air up to that radiator as well. So most of the uh, cooling venting is uh, done very low down on the car. I'll also just show you the charge port as well. So you push that and then lift that up uh, to access your two charge ports. So uh, they also have additional rubber bungs in there as well. So the top one, the AC charging port is separate to the bottom one, which is the DC charging port. So that's a type two. Uh, standard AC charging port. I think these are a seven kilowatt charger. Anyway, I'll put that up on the screen. And then the bottom one is our two DC um, charging pins, and that's a CCS 50 kilowatt DC connector. So the top one, AC charging, is typically what you would use um, overnight to get a slow charge at home or charging in your workplace. And the rapid charging DC port is what you would use on the roadside when you're uh, on a trip and you want to get that quicker high current charge. And on the MG, the back of this badge here under the MG writing has lots of little white LEDs in it. So when you're charging, this uh, pulsates and the back of the badge illuminates uh, so you can uh, see that your car is charging successfully. I do like that I've gone to the effort of putting the charge ports uh, at the front of the car in the middle. It's a far better position. Uh, because what you find, uh, the cables on rapid chargers are often quite short and you've got to park just right if you've got um, charge ports on the side of the cars because the cables won't stretch over. So it's far better to have it centrally uh, at the front so you just pull in nose first and uh, it doesn't matter whether your cable's coming from the left or the right hand side of the car, it will always fit. Um, what a lot of manufacturers do is they will use the um, if, it, if it's a vehicle that has a, a petrol or diesel version they will use the existing fuel filler cap flaps usually on the back wing here and put the charge ports behind there because obviously there is a flap already in the bodywork but what MG have done even though this 
car is also made as a um, petrol version is they've changed these panels. I'm assuming the filler cap on the petrol versions is on the rear wing here, but we don't have a panel. So, um, you know, it's, while you say, well, it's just a case of changing the rear wing, it's more than that, because that rear wing is also all of that panel all the way down to the front of the windscreen. So it's good that they've gone to the effort of putting the charge port at the front and haven't copied what, what a lot of other manufacturers have done, they've just stuck them there. Uh, because it is a little bit more awkward when they're on the side, as I said.